What's up internet, Kevin with TLD here bringing you my thoughts on what Sony had to offer at this year's E3 conference. Now, first off, the thing that caught me off guard the most is the fact that the PS4 has a price tag of only $400, which is a lot cheaper compared to the PS3 at launch. And even if you compare it to a brand new PS3 today, it's only $100 more. Though to be fair, the current PS3s do come all bundled with games right now. Now, while I did think it was a little unnecessary for them to go as in-depth as they did in regards to what Microsoft is doing with their new DRM procedures on the Xbox One, I do have to admit that it was very hard not to laugh at the giant grin on Jack Trenton's face as he was discussing how they're handling used games. Now, while the specs on the release and the details of how they're handling used games are very important, still the biggest foremost concern is, of course, what games are going to be on it. And we did get a healthy serving of titles that we already knew about, as well as a couple of new announcements that we got to see and try out on the show floor. Now, to begin with, we did get some actual gameplay and more info on games we already know about for the PS3, like Beyond Two Souls, as well as further information on a lot of PS4 titles that were announced back at the console reveal, including Killzone Shadowfall, Drive Club, and my personal favorite, Infamous Second Son, which we did get to see some actual gameplay of, which showed it to be very stylistically similar to the original games, but with a new spin on it with his powers involving smoke and fire instead of electricity. Now, we also got a couple of new games announced for the PS4 that will be exclusive, including The Order, which is a Victorian-era steampunk-style game where you're fighting werewolves, as well as a new game from Quantic Dream called The Dark Sorcerer, which looks to be a lot more comedy-focused as opposed to their usual drama style. Now, what I found interesting about their conference and their floor show is the fact that they emphasized a lot more multi-platform games and indie titles rather than their own exclusives. Multi-platform wise, we saw gameplay for games like Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed 4, NBA 2K14, and we finally got to see some real gameplay of Destiny, instead of just having some vague trailers like before. Now there was also a number of games announced at the Sony conference that will be multi-platform, including the long-awaited reveal of Kingdom Hearts 3, as well as new footage for Final Fantasy vs. 13, which is now being rebranded as 15. We also saw a very misdirecting trailer for Mad Max that looked an awful lot like Fallout, and completely out of nowhere, it was revealed that Elder Scrolls Online will be getting a console release, including an exclusive beta for PS4. On the indie game side of things, we saw a large number of different titles covering a large array of different styles, which is Sony's way of showing they're trying to have a lot more support for the indie game movement and not relying solely on just big name publishers. One title in particular that I was really excited to see, especially because the booth was being run by the actual design team, was Transistor from Supergiant Games, the team behind Bastion, which I'm a huge fan of. Now alongside these games, we did also get a couple announcements in regards to the PlayStation Plus service, which is getting a few tweaks for the PS4. First off, anyone that's currently a member and gets a PS4 will have their membership move over. They're also going to be offering a few games for the PS4 right away that have limited versions for PlayStation Plus members, the first of which they announced will be Drive Club. Now one thing they did try to sneak in about PlayStation Plus is that they are adopting a model similar to what Microsoft is doing with Xbox Live Gold, where you still get all the benefits that PlayStation Plus had before, but now it's also used as a requirement for playing online multiplayer games. Now while we were checking out Sony's exhibit at the floor show, I got a chance to try out the controller, which despite its appearance actually feels very familiar to the PS3 controller, although I will say is a bit more comfortable in terms of its grips. One thing that did get a little annoying for me, although this just has to do with the fact that we haven't had time to adjust to it yet, is the placement of the touchpad, which I was constantly pushing when I was thinking I was trying to pause the game. Overall, Sony had a lot less to say in terms of console exclusives than I thought they would, but the presentation overall was very solid thanks to a combination of the controller design, third-party support, and an absolutely astounding price point. These factors together, I'd have to say that my overall reaction to Sony this year is very positive, and I have a lot more high hopes in terms of what we'll see in the coming years after launch. Now those are just my thoughts on what we saw from Sony at this year's E3. If you have yet to, make sure to check out my other vids for E3 coverage, including my thoughts on the Xbox One. If you have yet to do so, please make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all of our latest vids, including more E3 coverage like my thoughts on Nintendo, and a comparison of the Xbox One and PS4. As always guys, thank you so much for watching our videos. If you liked this one, please make sure to hit that like button as it is the easiest way to help the channel. I deeply appreciate it. As always, I'm Kevin for TLD, and I'll see you next time.